Astronaut's blood shows signs of DNA mutations due to space flight. Now, the researchers stored astronaut blood for 20 years to see how short space shuttle flights affected space flyer health. Well, and the results are mind-blowing and damning and are excellent to use as a proxy for what is going to happen here on the surface of Earth during the ongoing grand solar minimum and magnetic excursion that we're all living. Now, astronaut cancer risk needs careful monitoring, concludes a study that stored space flyer blood for 20 years. All 14 astronauts in the study from NASA's space shuttle program had DNA mutations in blood-forming stem cells, a Nature Communications biology study August 31st concluded. And you're looking at the paper here, which you're going to link in full below the video. Now, the mutations, though unusually high considering the astronaut's age, was below a key threshold of concern, and that's good news. While the study is unique for keeping astronaut blood around for so long, the results are not show-stopping. Another piece of good news. Rather, the researchers suggest that astronauts should be subject to periodic blood screenings to keep an eye on the possible mutations. And it should be considered in context with another 2019 study. For example, that found astronauts are not dying from cancer due to ionizing space radiation. Well, now there's a couple reasons for this, and we'll get to that in just a moment, and we'll explain why this may be cherry-picked data. Now, monitoring programs will nevertheless be crucial as NASA reaches for long-term, deep-duration space missions through its Artemis program, on the moon, and later, human excursions to Mars, which are planned. The new study team said in a statement that the new study and the 2019 cancer study both largely considered only short-duration astronaut missions. Hmm. I wonder if they only choose the times when cosmic rays were at the least in the last 100 years as well. Now, the team decided to pursue the new study in light of the growing interest in both commercial space flights, well, and deep space exploration, and the potential health risks of exposure to various harmful factors that are associated with repeated or long-duration exploration space missions. Now, the study lead author, Dr. David Gukasian, and cardiology professor at Icon Mount Sinai, said in the statement, NASA recently changed its lifetime radiation requirements. And this is for astronauts that critics said were discriminating against women who historically had lower limits than male astronauts. To date, other genders have not been disclosed in the agency's population, thankfully. Now, the researchers found a higher frequency of somatic mutations in the genes of 14 astronauts, which is all of them that were considered in the study, relative to statistics for the population who have been to space. The space cohort flew between 1998 and 2001, and this is critical because we're going to reveal to you the cosmic ray data at this time frame, which is some of the lowest in decades, which I believe is cherry-picked on purpose to prove that astronauts are not being damaged. So the group of astronauts they chose flew between 1998 and 2001 on shuttle missions of an average of 12 days. That's it. Do you know how long it takes to get to Mars? but I do digress. Now, roughly 85% of the group was male and six of the astronauts were on their first mission. 
Researchers collected whole blood samples from the astronauts twice, exactly 10 days before spaceflight and on the day of landing. And white blood cells were collected once, three days after landing. The blood samples were then left untouched in a freezer for two decades. Chilling at minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 80 degrees centigrade. The somatic mutation seen in the genes was less than 2%, however, and those individuals who breach that threshold face more risk in developing cardiovascular disease and some forms of cancer, according to the statement. Now, the presence of these mutations does not necessarily mean that the astronauts will develop cardiovascular disease or cancer, but there is a risk that over time, this could happen through ongoing and prolonged exposure to the extreme environment of deep space. And this is a great proxy for what we're all now experiencing here on the planet's surface. Increased cosmic rays and increased radiation from space, similar to those astronauts when they flew back in 1998. And why? Because our magnetosphere is waning. For two reasons. The sun has been shutting down for the last three cycles. Each is weaker than the last. And we're going into a period of very solar quiet. And so in the last two decades, we've reached the cosmic ray maximum here on Earth that dates back for a very long time. And so when we say there's a two-time space radiation risk if you're in the mountains and 40 times in an airplane, these numbers are increasing exponentially every year. And that's because, and we're going to show you here, starting back in 1991, each subsequent cycle has had a lower threshold in the cosmic ray count. Each cycle, cosmic rays are increasing ever more. And back in the study time, which was 1988, what is the time? Let's, let's get the exact dates here. 1998 to 2001. So that's 1998 to 2001. Look at this. Look at the data set they chose. This is some of the lowest cosmic ray readings in the last, well, as far back as they could go when we were flying in space. Had they chosen 2009 to 2013, I'm pretty sure they would have gotten a different result. Had they chosen 2017 to 2021, they would have gotten a different result. These cosmic ray readings are, this is the cosmic ray maximum back in 2009. The highest cosmic rays ever on Earth in recent memory, in hundreds of years perhaps. Going back to the Maunder Minimum. And we should expect these peaks to occur each solar cycle during the minimum, moving forward for decades. More exposure to space radiation affecting the lungs, the breasts, the immune system, the digestive system, the reproductive system, and the mind. And we also have dozens of peer-reviewed papers from the literature about the effects of space weather on biology, specifically human health. There are geomagnetic storm risks, cosmic ray risks, solar flare risks. They all have to do with acute myocardial infarction and heart problems, visual impairment, reaction time, cognitive diminution, emotional instability. This is the full moon effect. People go crazy. Suicide risk, mental disorder flare up. Anxiety, stress, emo emotional instability. Even an alert for diabetic patients and those with metabolic disorders. But for some of us, we react differently. The cosmic radiation doesn't affect us. Our genetics are different. Some people are affected in a negative way. And other people 
ascend. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. We packed a lot into just 10 minutes. If you have any questions, leave them below and we may extrapolate. But the facts are in. The one thing we know that causes mutations and genes is cosmic radiation, nothing else. And we can prove from the paleontological record that when magnetic excursions occur, there are mass extinctions and instantaneous speciations. What's that all about? Our genetics are in control. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the sun. And that's a boom. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Share this video. Be a hero. We love you. Yeah.